Good morning. It's Friday. Uh, first Friday of 2004, is it? Uh, 2024. Oh, 2004. What a year I was. 27? Tw I was 26. I turned 27 at the end of the year. Um, the world was so much younger then. And so was I. My liver was still eating itself, but I had no idea. Well, actually, it might not have been. We don't know what triggers PBC. Or we, they, you know, medical science, the world, everyone, humanity. I don't know, some guy might know. <laughs> but he's not talking. So, um, I, I, I picture, though, that I've had it for you know, all my life, that's, and, you know, just now starting to show damage, and it makes sense that, like, women get diagnosed around my age, around menopause, and I'm wondering, and I don't know, because medical science has failed women, because they study men, because, oh, women have periods, so we can't study f hormonal fluctuations, but, like, that's our body, so you study our bodies. It's ridiculous. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous how we've been failed. But, I wonder if there's a menopause connection, a perimenopause connection, like if our livers start, if there's something released or something that happens when our estrogen starts to drop that really affects our livers because so many women around my age have liver issues and admittedly quite a few of them previously had cancer, which is making me think that chemo and all that kills livers, at least for women. Which is another failure of the medical community. If this keeps happening, if you, if you survive one horrible disease to only get another one, is that really survival, though? Right. So, like, we need we need to look at this. Women's health is vital, and I just don't know if we're if I mean I guess nowadays yes, but the ripple effects to get to all of us, you know, maybe we don't have time, and that's 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 messed up. Maybe we do. It's all a question mark anyway, really. I mean, that's as close as I'm going to get to a political rant, I think. Rant. But it is, it is definitely an issue in healthcare. It is very important that we keep banging on that they need to study the female body. It's important we're not small males. We have different bodies with different needs. And different medication necessities. You can't just give us the same pill you give a man. And they do. I mean the same pill, but like the same dosage. Like I, I had um, uh, a respiratory infection once. And I've always been fine with um, Z-Pak or Moxicillin. Oh, I guess z pack is more years, but... <laughs> The doctor on Teladoc didn't want to give it to me. She wanted to give me doxycycline, which is much too strong for me. And I got very sick afterwards. Um, it was back in the day before I got diagnosed, I would have bathroom problems. And I put it down to IBS. I thought I had IBS. I also thought I was lactose intolerant. Um, excuse me. Excuse me, I just ate breakfast, so the liver is letting itself be known. Um, obviously I wasn't obviously with celiac and what, what keeps me up at night the thing that scares me about it is that I've always loved bread bread has always been my favorite like I'll just take a, a piece of bread out of, a, out of a loaf and just eat it always and so when I feel sick my comfort foods are saltines oyster crackers toast so I would get sick from celiac and the things that I used to make myself feel better were only making it worse, so it just dragged on, and I, that, you know, that's how, how I lost all this weight. You know, this used to be one of my favorite shirts. You know, it's huge. But I like to wear it because it's comfortable and soft. I don't have, I don't dress up every day. I, I dress up a lot. I dress up not for TikTok. I know it looks like I wear something new every day for TikTok, but I do it for me. Because I never did it before. I always wore just jeans, a t-shirt, and flannel. And usually when I was younger, they were just far too big for me because I didn't understand aesthetics. It took me a long time to really be able to, to understand 
this space isn't the same. Like, I look at somebody wearing clothes and they look like that, but it, something in my mind didn't click that how I look isn't like how they look. So I would just, you know, it, it sounds like autistic stuff, I suppose. Whatever. I'm not, I'm here to talk about that. But, excuse me, fucking liver. <laughs> um, I like to, 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 to wear these clothes now. I like to look the way I've always wanted to look. And people have uh, commented, and I mean, my fashion influences are easy. I'm, I'm Gen X, it's Ducky Dale. And it's old movies, old black and white movies. And for some reason I imprinted on like the male clothing. Like I like hats, I like suits, I like, you know, and that doesn't make me a man. I'm not masculine, I just like those clothes. And so, because since I've been sick, but it's also before, even though I work from home, I make an effort to get dressed every single day. And this isn't because I'm sick, this is just how I've been since the pandemic. Even when I was, wasn't working, when I was looking for a job, get up every day, shower, get dressed, do the things. Always. That's how, that's just how I've always been. Excuse me. Jeez, my liver's really talkative today. Anyhow, so, I, I, I enjoy the, the thinking of the outfits ahead of time. I enjoy putting accessories together to make a simple jeans and t-shirt outfit look like something interesting and whenever I go out now I get a lot of compliments where I didn't before especially when I wear suspenders women look really good in suspenders I believe I believe something and hats haberdashery <laughs> works for women um, I mean it works for men too obviously but men don't generally wear that kind of stuff anymore nobody does um, well Paul F. Tompkins does there are plenty of people. Jesse Thorne does. I don't like Jesse Thorne, but he does dress that way. So, um, I'm not sure why I got onto that. But, uh, yeah, today's okay. I haven't, I didn't hear from my Cigna nurse yesterday. My, my insurance nurse. Um, but she did that before. She would, she wouldn't call necessarily every day. Hopefully she won't call today because I don't want to deal with my health today. It's Friday, you know? So, we will see. I will, I will answer the phone. It's weird though. I'm sitting here and my phone is always right here. Like, this is my desk, here's my computer, here's my other computer, and my phone is right here. I can just touch it. Obviously it's in my hand right now. But, and whenever these people call, whenever UCLA or my gastro doctor or my Cigna nurse calls, I'm out of the room. I'm in the bathroom, or I'm checking the mail, or I'm... Whatever. It's insane. Like, I should be taking my phone with me, but, like, really, I don't need... You know, like, I'm gonna be back in here in, like, two minutes. So, I don't know if it just looks like I'm dodging them, or, or what. I guess, I mean, partially I might be if I don't call them back, but... I don't call the Cigna nurse back, because I'll just... Because she's... She with a million other people. I, I, I've done that before, and you just leave a message and she still calls you back three days later when she has time to call you back. Like, that's just the situation. She's She's got other people to deal with, not just me, so I'm not, she's not, like, sitting by the phone like, oh, is she gonna call me back? And of course not. So, like I said yesterday, people tend to call me because, you know, we're in, like, the big deal specialist thing. And they call me when they're ready for me. Otherwise, sit tight. So I've just babbled a whole lot of nothing, but I'm still feeling pretty great. Took my pills, ate my breakfast. So yeah, not bad. Happy Friday, happy weekend, and I will talk to you later.